So then, with the release of the brand new M3 MacBook Pro in the mix now, and it's in that brand new 14-inch model design, is it worth spending 1,600 of your US dollars or equivalent on it, or should you maybe spend quite a bit less, like $1,100 on maybe the smaller MacBook Air with the M2, or even the slightly larger one at $1,300? Well, today I'm going to try my best to answer those questions. Now, straight away, throwing it out there, we all know, looking at Geekbench here, that obviously the M3 is definitely faster. It's faster in its CPU, single core, multi core performance than the M2, and it's also faster as well in graphics power. But to be honest, were we expecting any less? You know, this is the next generation of chipset. Of course it's going to be fast. I'm stating the obvious here. So yeah, we knew that was going to happen. But the big question is, who is this MacBook for? And who are these MacBooks for? And is it worth actually spending that extra bit of cash on one of these? Or maybe you should hold up for one of these here, get these now with the M2 chipset inside of them. Or maybe you should just wait out just about another six to eight months to actually get the M3 chipset put inside of these because they're definitely going to be coming inside of these two models. So then guys, just quickly, one of those myths out there is that obviously a Mac cannot get a Windows virus on it unless you're like running a VM or something like this on it, but Macs are fully protected from viruses. Well, that is not entirely true. There are viruses and malwares designed specifically to target a Mac and you need to protect yourself. And this is exactly where Combo Cleaner comes in place. Combo Cleaner is like the ultimate all-in-one cleaner and also virus protector for your Mac. But if you have Windows or also have an Android phone too, you can also get Combo Cleaner for this too. You can run the antivirus scanner and checker, which always gets updated constantly. And then at the same time as well, you can get rid of loads of junk and bits and pieces on your Mac. So you can either use the combo scan, what cleans up all junk and caches and things like this. Also looking for big files, duplicates, and like I said, can run that antivirus and also run a privacy scanner too. Or if you want to, you can actually run each of these sort of different scans and things individually and help speed up your Mac and also protect it at the same time. And the great thing is, especially that we have new Macs now coming, you can actually get 80% off Combo Cleaner right now using the discount code what's in my description of this video. Well, what I think we need to do first of all is actually talk about these two MacBook Airs and who they are for. These two models here, the 13.6 MacBook Air, and also we've got here the 15.2 inch MacBook Air. What they're designed for, they're for people who just need to use MacBooks, who just generally, I don't know, who are a student or, you know, who are going to college or just want it at home use. At the end of the day, these have both got eight gigabytes of RAM starting out inside of them. And that is enough for kind of sort of daily kind of tasks. If you're going to actually push these out even further, you can actually put more RAM inside of them. But the other thing as well you've got to be aware of, you can't push them over hard because at the end of the day, they have no fans inside of them. And if you started pushing these with loads and loads of pro apps on them, so for example, you had Photoshop running, let's say you had Lightroom running, let's say you had like five tabs, six, seven tabs open at the same time, Word, Office, I don't know, Final Cut Pro, it's going to get quite toasty and it's going to start to throttle. And if you don't know what throttle means, it basically means is that Apple's chipset inside it will start to sacrifice its performance to keep it cooler inside. And you will begin to notice that if you do actually push it to those extremes. But generally speaking, if you're not stupid enough to actually buy it for that reason, do that many apps all at the same time, you're going to be absolutely fine. Don't get me wrong, if you get yourself, say, Photoshop on this and you're running that and have say two or three tabs open say in Safari or Chrome or something like this and maybe your email is open in Outlook too you're going to be absolutely fine you can have no problems whatsoever running them on both of these machines here the other thing what I love about these MacBook Airs they're obviously much more thinner they are lighter too what is really really good they're nice and portable in that sort of sense obviously they only have sort of two USB-C ports and they also have a headphone port on the other side and also also, you have MagSafe charging too, but that is it for ports wise. If you want to add HDMI or if you want to add, say, a normal USB port or something like this, you're going to have to get yourself like a hub that you can see right here. And they don't cost too much to plug one of those in and buy one of them or say on Amazon, for example. 
Sound quality on these are good too. They're not great, but they're good. So they're really, really good for that sort of purpose. And also at the same time as well, the screen isn't mini LED. It's a standard sort of LED, normal screens that we've had technology for a good number of years as the retina displays in MacBooks. And of course, they're not ProMotion either. But overall, this is what these MacBooks are designed for. They're designed for, I would say, probably around about 80% of Mac users out there or Apple users or computer users out there. People who just use these for home use, uh, for studies and things like this, not pushing out pro special apps for them. They're just for your bog standard apps and they do a fantastic job at that. And if you're going to be just doing that, if you're just going to be doing some mild photo editing, maybe editing your home video or your vacation movie, what you did, these are going to be absolutely perfect for your needs. So with that then, what is this MacBook for then? The M3 14-inch MacBook Pro. Well, at last, we've actually got this brand new design at last for an M standard sort of chipset. For the M1 and the M2, we actually had the Touch Bar MacBook Pro, and this is quite an old design. So Apple have put that design now, the M3, inside one of these sort of Pro designs that we have right now. It's absolutely fantastic. And the great thing about this MacBook, obviously, it's definitely heavier than, say, this model here. It's about the same weight as the larger 15 inch one but the great thing as well i love about it is that you do get a lot of pro upgrades inside of it for example starting with the screen it's a mini led display what we have inside of this and also it's a pro motion display it's far more brighter it's far more smoother as well so it's for those sort of pro needs if you're doing full on photoshops all the time or if you're doing sort of video editing this is a display you want to work on it's fantastic for that obviously if you're just doing bits and pieces of Photoshop and things like this, maybe come back to one of these MacBook Airs because they just do the job absolutely fine. The other thing what this is for is obviously if somebody I would say is a student and say they're actually doing things like photography or amateur photography or photo editing or amateur videos, you know, they're making a video almost like every other week or something like this. Unlike here where you're making maybe the odd vacation video once or twice a year, then this probably this chipset is the right one for you. And the other main reason behind that is because it does have a fan inside of it, what keeps it cool and also that you can have multiple sort of apps open inside of it. The only one thing I'm not too happy about this, and I've expressed in another video, it only comes with eight gigabytes of RAM. And recently Apple just claimed that eight gigabytes is the equivalent of say 16 gigabyte RAMs on a normal PC. And personally, no, I don't buy that. I'd probably say eight gigabytes of RAM in here is probably more like the equivalent of about say 10 maybe, pushing 11, 12 gigabytes of RAM, what you find in the PC. I can say this, it's definitely faster, the eight gigabytes of RAM inside of this, than what you get with an eight gigabytes sort of Windows computer. I will give Apple that, but no, nah, not the equivalent of 16 gigabytes, no way. But moving on with this, you get some other sort of pro features too. You also get a HDMI port and you also get an SD card slot too so you don't have to go out and buy yourself a hub obviously if you want more ports or things like this yeah you're going to probably still have to buy yourself a hub like that one every other sort of MacBook Pro user has that same problem too the other thing as well what I love about it is the actual lovely sort of design that we get here and it just feels a bit more of a solid computer don't get me wrong Apple built all of their machines really solid and thick and you know really really strong materials but this one just feels a bit more premium when you hold it inside your hands with that. And I think definitely for pro users who are going to be taking it out and about with them constantly, where these machines probably you might keep them at home or take them on vacation here and there. These ones out and about with you studying things like this. This machine here is going to be definitely a bit more stronger for you in that sort of case. But the conundrum what I have here is obviously the M3 chipset is faster than we have with the M2 chipset. But the thing is, the M3 will be coming to these machines here. And in my opinion, I would say, you know, if you're a person who's going, I have to buy M3 because it's the latest, it's the greatest, and this is the only offering I can get, if you can hang out there six to eight more months, I would get the M3 in one of these because they're going to be coming out probably maybe spring next year or probably the latest WWDC 2024. So we're talking sort of early, mid sort of June time that these will be probably coming out. So if you can just wait a little bit longer for that, I would recommend getting an M3 in one of these because they're going to be absolutely fantastic and they're going to give you similar kind of performance to what you're getting here. Obviously, like I said, this one does have the fan inside of it so it can keep it cooler and stop throttling issues as much as what you get with this. But honestly, 
if you're going to be that type of user who's going to just do kind of those standard sort of apps here, I'm repeating myself here, then yeah, get yourself the M2 version right now. Or what I would say is wait out to next year to get the M3 version. I personally cannot see that the prices are going to increase on both these machines. They might by $50 or $100, but it will still be way lower than what we've got here with this machine here. And at the end of the day, you know, you're saving $500 between both these models here. This is a 14.2 inch. This one here is 13.6, only slightly smaller. And this one here, you'd be saving yourself around about two, three hundred dollars on one of these two. And then also the other thing I would also shout out here is that with Black Friday coming out, there's going to be deals on these, especially this one, because this one's been out now for what, about 15, 17 months now, I don't know, since uh, when I'm making this video. So with Black Friday coming up, a lot of deals be coming out for this one and this one as well there's going to be the odd deal too on this whereas this is so new there's not really going to be many deals at all if any on it there is the obviously the odd one i've seen one floating around but generally speaking you're going to get even lower sort of prices for these and those prices i've shouted out for you about $1,099 i've seen these go for less than $1,000 this model and i've seen this one here go for $1,200 as well so yeah big big saving and they're absolutely fantastic devices so what i'm going to say is guys if you need that entry pro machine and also if you're going to use apps a bit more frequently or those pro apps than what i've described what you're going to get with this i'd go for one of these but i wouldn't buy it just because you get in the pro name it'd be a waste of money to do so i'd get one of these two instead or, like I said, I'd wait for the M3 chipset that's going to be put inside these. It was only six to eight months away. What is the same one that's going to be inside this right now? And with that as well, guys, it's time to wrap up this video. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. And also, if you want to hear the latest Apple news, reviews, and comparisons, please also make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell. Until next time, guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.